Hi, I'm Scarlett, and I'm here to take you through all things Rover. Whether or not you've had a bit of trouble setting up your Rover, or you just want to have the best flight possible, you've come to the right place. In this video, we're going to talk about what's in the box and getting to know your Rover, the battery, the SD card, calibrating your Rover, obstacle avoidance and bumpers, the app, setting up your Rover for flight, and photos and videos. So let's get started. Now, before we get into anything, the first step is getting to know your Rover. So when you open the box, you'll see your hard carry case and your bumper box on the side. Open up the hard carry case and you'll see the Rover unit, two batteries and your charging dock. If you lift up the two batteries, you'll see your USB charging cable and your carabiner. Then if you lift up the Rover, you'll see the battery safety guide, the setup guide and your micro SD card. Now it's really important for you to read both of these guides as they're chock full of really useful information and will make sure you have the best flight possible. Now the most important parts of your Rover and the parts that we'll be using the most today are the red activation button, the camera at the front, the obstacle avoidance sensors on each side and the micro SD card slot at the back. For a full list of all the parts, see the Rover setup guide. So your Rover comes with two batteries, each have a flight time of eight minutes. When you get your Rover out of the box, it's important to put those batteries straight on charge because they won't have a full eight minutes of charge in them. So charge them before you fly your Rover. Your charger can plug into any outlet with a USB connection. So a phone charger in a wall or your computer. To charge your battery, make sure the pins of the battery and the pins of the charger line up, push them together and you're good to go. You'll see a blue light flash up in the corner. Once that blue light has turned solid, your battery's fully charged. A full charge should take around 90 minutes if it's plugged into a wall outlet. To remove the battery, simply squeeze the sides and pull it apart. Remember, don't put a freshly charged battery straight into Rover as the battery could be hot and this could damage your Rover. So give it a couple of minutes and then you're good to go. To install your battery into Rover, make sure once again that the pins line up and push them in. When you hear a beep, your battery is properly installed. It's really important to take the battery out of Rover once you've finished flying and keep it stored safely inside the portable carry case. For more tips on how to use your battery, check out the battery safety guide. Your Rover comes with a 16 gigabyte micro SD card that you need to install to take any photos. To install it, make sure the gold bands are facing up, pop it into the slot and push until you hear a click. Make sure you install it before you put the battery in and don't force the card into the slot. If it doesn't slide in naturally, make sure the gold bands are facing up. You can format your SD card in the settings menu of the Rover app, but be careful. If you format your SD card, you'll lose any photos that are on there. For more information, check out the setup guide. Calibration is really important. I know it sounds like a bit of a no-brainer, but it's really important to get a stable flight with your Rover. What it does is it actually resets the sensors so that Rover knows how it's flying. And it's important to do it before every flight and after every crash. To calibrate, put your Rover on a flat and stable surface. Connect to your Rover and go to the flight screen. Drag the two joysticks down and towards the bottom of the screen like this. Wait until you see the red activation button flashing, then let go of the joysticks. Once the red light has stopped flashing, you're good to go. Check out the app help screen or the setup guide for more information. You may have seen these little black squares all around your Rover. These are the obstacle avoidance sensors and surprise, they help Rover avoid obstacles. I know, groundbreaking. To toggle these on, go into the flight screen of the app and press the obstacle avoidance icon. You'll know it's working when the icon turns blue. This helps Rover find obstacles as it's flying and make sure that it doesn't run into them. But be careful because it can affect the way that Rover flies. So always make sure you keep an eye on it and just know what's going on. To improve your confidence while you're learning to fly, we've included four bumpers in your box. Simply fit them to the frame of Rover on the corners like this, and they absorb any impact that Rover might feel if it bumps into something. If they break, don't worry, these are totally disposable and are just there to help get your confidence up while you're learning to fly. You can download the Rover app from the App Store or Google Play. Check out the setup guide for more details on compatibility. When you open the app for the first time, you'll be taken to a series of help screens that will show you about certain functions of the app. Once you've read these, you'll be taken to the home screen. From there, you can connect to your Rover, check out the photos you've taken, go back to those help screens, or get some flight tips. Before you fly Rover, make sure that you've read the setup guide and the battery safety guide. You've installed the SD card. You've fully charged and correctly installed the battery. 
you've got enough charge on your phone and you've installed the Rover app. And you've got a good environment for flying. That means no strong wind or rain. Once you've installed the battery and you've heard a beep, go to your phone's Wi-Fi menu. Once the LEDs have started flashing, go and select Rover from the Wi-Fi menu. The default password is eight zeros. If you get a message saying there's no internet connection, don't worry. This is just Rover telling you that you can't surf the web through it, but you will be able to fly just fine. Once you've connected to Rover, launch the Rover app. You'll be able to press the blue go for launch button. This will take you to the flight screen. If this is your first time using the app, you'll see some instructions for what each button means on the flight screen. Take some time to read these and familiarize yourself with what they mean. Before flying, you'll need to activate your Rover. Push and hold the red activation button for two seconds until you see the light flashing. Let go once you see it flash. When it becomes solid again, your Rover is activated. All you need to do now is calibrate your Rover and you're good to go. A handy hint, it's really helpful to know what settings you have toggled on and off before you launch Rover. That could be if you want five megapixel or 12 megapixel photos, if you want obstacle avoidance on or off, that kind of thing. So double check that before you fly, just to make sure your flight is nice and easy. When you launch Rover by pushing the launch button in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, let Rover rise and come to a steady hover for a couple of seconds. This means that the sensors can figure out where Rover's flying and means you have a steady and stable flight. The launch button also doubles as your landing button. So to land Rover, simply press that button and Rover will land itself. It may take a couple of seconds, so just be patient. Rover comes with two flight modes, drone mode and selfie mode. So drone mode controls Rover as if you were a pilot sitting behind the camera. So if the camera's facing away from you, right is right and left is left. However, if the camera's facing towards you, right is left and left is right. Flip orientation reverses these controls. So if the camera's facing towards you, right means right and left means left. You can activate flip orientation by touching the icon in the flight screen. Selfie mode means that Rover takes its directions from whichever way you are facing. So regardless of where the camera is facing, right equals right and left equals left. It's important when using selfie mode to stay in your original launch position. Try not to move around too much. In terms of controlling your rover, you have two options, joystick mode or motion control mode. Joystick mode means that you use the two on-screen joysticks to control your rover. See the app for a more detailed breakdown of what directions each joystick covers. A small tip, for full control over your rover as it flies, use small tapping motions and slow movements across the joysticks to have full control of rover's movement. In motion control mode, you can use your phone to guide what direction you'd like rover to fly in by tilting your device. To activate motion control mode, place your thumb on the screen as indicated by the animation in the app. You can use the joystick on the other side of the screen to control Rover's height. Once you want to stop using motion control mode, simply take your thumb off the screen. For more detailed instructions, check out the setup guide or the app. If you crash your Rover, don't even worry about it. Here are some tips to get you back up and flying fast. If the battery popped out when you crashed, simply put it back in and reconnect via your Wi-Fi menu. It's really important to recalibrate your rover after a crash to make sure you get the best flight possible. To avoid any damage to you, your surroundings, or rover while you're learning to fly, make sure to use your included bumpers. Once you've finished flying rover and taking your photos and videos, you can view them in the rover gallery in the app. To download these photos onto your device, go into the rover gallery and select the photos you'd like to download. Click the download button at the bottom right-hand side of the screen then these will come up in your camera roll. From there, you can save them to your device or share them to all your social media. Happy sharing. Well, there you have it. If you have any more questions on how to use your Rover or want to show us your Rover selfies, hit us up on our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. We'd love to hear from you.